Okay, and welcome to, I believe, what is the third video of this entire course. And as you can see here, this is called Canonly Setup. So, today's agenda, we will be setting up your Canonly, and it's a booking platform. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it already. And But if you're not, it's what I believe is the best sort of platform you can use to sort of uh, book appointments. Because you, when you're booking appointments, you can of course like just send calendar invites, but to actually make sure that people show up to your appointments with reminders, with confirmations on like email and SMS, everything like that, uh, we recommend using Calendly. So remember to subscribe and follow for updates about the course and just general tips and tricks running an agency. Um, all the links will be down in the description. Also, join the Facebook group for support and a community. That link will also be in the uh, description, sorry. And yeah, just so I don't forget, share the course. As I mentioned before, the only way this course can sort of grow is by you guys actually sharing it. So please, if you find some value and you might know a friend or someone you know that can also find value from this course, please share this with them. I would really, really appreciate that. And very, very important. So if you really want to succeed, watch the entire video. Don't skip, don't fast forward. With that said, let's get right into it. Okay. So yeah, um, as I mentioned before, Calendly. And uh, yeah, like there are a ton of other options you can of course use. And if you're using any other sort of booking platform, um, I recommend you try your best to implement the same things here and the sort of settings as we have on our Calendly. But just as an example, so uh, many of you probably will know what Go High Level is. And um, earlier, we used Go High Level as our booking platform because I thought that we're um, still paying for Go High Level, so might as well set up our booking page there. But And it worked kind of uh, great, just that we had to pay quite a lot and for like all the SMS and emails being sent out as reminders, stuff like that. But also, I, from one day to another, I would just experience complete chaos because when people start to book their appointments, and uh, for some reason, just uh, for um, on one day, all the different sort of workflows and prospects, they just got mixed. So everybody got the wrong kind of notifications. People got very confused because let's say they booked their appointment for tomorrow. They got reminders that it was today, even though they booked for tomorrow. So it just got very, very messy. And from that day, we just switched over to Calendly and it's been working great since then. All right. So, um, yeah, as it says here, first we will create your booking event and I'll just also go into Calendly. So first of all, let me make myself a little smaller so you can actually follow along like that. And let's head over to Calendly. All right, so first of all, we will actually create your booking event. So how you do this, simply click the big blue button create here. You click event type. You select one on one. Um, yep, and you click next. And then you basically have your event uh, created. But yeah, since I've already sort of got this um, done before, I'm gonna just go back to the actual event we already have set up so I can sort of show you. So you can just follow along there. Um, all right. So yeah, we, we call our um, call discovery call. You can call it the same. Um, yeah, use whatever you want, something that just makes sense. Location, Google Meet, that's what we prefer. It integrates all great with like Google Calendar. And I know there's a ton of you maybe using Zoom, that works completely fine as well. And description slash instructions. So, uh, yeah, first of all, we have just decided to include a big sort of uh, notice that this is a Google Meet so that people don't get confused. Um, some might believe that they will be called by us on phone. We just want to make it completely clear that this is a Google Meet. And uh, we also mentioned that we want them to bring all decision makers to the call. Very important because in our sales process, we really want to talk with all the decision makers to sort of be able to get a decision on the first call. And if not all decision makers are there, that's impossible. So that's why we include that there. And just have a simple like, yeah, call something. Yeah, it can be whatever to your niche. Um, yeah, event link. We have just named this discovery call as it, yeah, that's what the name is. And event call, you can have whatever, doesn't really matter. Moving on to when can people book this event. So 
Um, yeah, like this is very, very optional. So as it says here, we have this normally set to five calendar days in the future. But the reason this says eight right now is because um, just a couple minutes ago, we had a prospect re requesting to be able to book um, later than that. So in those cases, we usually just go in and extend the calendar if people want to specifically book um, at a later date. But normally I think five, around five is quite good because you don't want to people to be able to book too long into the future since um, if they book many days ahead, they might maybe forget that they actually booked the appointment. And we've just seen that the show up rate usually is the best um, the, the, the sooner the uh, actual call will take place. Okay, and duration, we have set this to four to five minutes. Again, if you have short, you can have shorter or longer, this is just what we have. And how do you want to offer your availability for this event type? So what we have, we have just set this to custom hours and then set every single time to by 12 to um, 11.45. This means that basically a prospect can book an appointment whenever. Of course, this is not sustainable, but it will make more sense that, uh, later because what we have done is that we have um, sort of, I have connected this Calendly to my Google Calendar. So um, I'll also show you this later, how you can do this, but basically, Calendly will always check in my Google Calendar whenever I'm free. So I have like set specific times where I want to have sales calls. And then let's say I have something that I need to do. I can just block that out time out in my Google Calendar. And then people can't book there instead of jumping in here all the time and messing around with availability. So I think this is the easiest way uh, for you as well. If we go down and um, add time for after your events, we'll set it to 10 just so people can't book directly after each other. So we have an appointment here. We don't want someone to book directly after. We want some time between to maybe go to the bathroom, grab something to eat really quick. And um, yeah. And if you click here, additional rules for your availability. So we have set this to 15 minutes, uh, which I think is a great way to start, especially if you're a beginner. So this basically means that people can book their appointment every 15 minutes and yeah, I just, that's just what we recommend. And scheduling conditions, we'll set this that invitees can't schedule within four hours because let's say you're doing something, you don't have any sales calls um, scheduled. You don't really want, like this is just personal preference. I don't want someone to be able to book within an hour because then I might not even make it back home and be able to prepare for that sales calls. So we have just set this to four hours yeah, we don't have any maximum allowed events because I want as many calls as possible. And uh, yeah, make sure that this is on, automatically detect and show the times in my invitees time zone. Just what that means is that when um, a prospect goes on your calendar page, let me actually show you what this looks like. So if we just go here, this uh, means that the time zone will automatically detect my time zone and just show the available times because otherwise it might, for example, I'm in Central Europe and uh, Central European time. And if I'm reaching out to US, people might get confused if it's in my time zone. So this just means that this would automatically detect the prospect's time zone and show the availability in their own time zone. Uh, yeah, haven't messed around with anything else here. Moving on invitee questions. Again, um, this is very, very dependable on your niche and what you actually want to question and uh, your prospects. But basically this, um, we have a little bit different uh, structure than what is said here, but let me just explain. So we always recommend to first ask for the name, of course, their email, also phone number. Then we just have a general question about what they sell. And of course, this will be depending on your niche. You can word this differently depending on your niche. We also have a question about what's your target monthly revenue. Basically, what they're trying to target. If you're in a niche where they may be, you should talk about more in, in terms of years. You can change this to yearly. Then we have a question. So what is stopping you from hitting your target monthly revenue? So let me just show an example. So since my agency help other marketing agencies, we have sort of recognize the three biggest, probably the biggest and most common problems from basically splitting the urgency. 
And that is mostly either getting leads, appointment booking, or closing sales. And uh, yeah, that's what we have included. You can do something else, of course, if that is uh, makes more sense for your niche. And yeah, I don't really think I need to show you how to actually add this because what you do that you should do is you just press add new question. You write the question. Um, I recommend to creep everything required. Um, yeah, because you shouldn't really include a question if it's not required. And then you can sort of choose what you want. One line means that they can just write their um, answer freely in that line. We can have multiple lines, um, radio buttons, shake boxes. Um, so yeah, I think we've used mainly one line and also radio buttons. So uh, shake boxes is that people can check multiple things. Radio buttons is that they can choose just one of those, th those things. All right. Let me just delete this. Um, yeah, moving on. We recommend asking, are you the sole decision maker? Again, in our sales process, it's quite important for us to talk with the decision maker slash makers. So if there are many uh, or other decision makers, we want to know that. That is why we just ask that. And then lastly, we have a, I recommend you ask them if let's say you have multiple platforms where you are booking appointments. As an example here, we have example email, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. Because sometimes it can be hard for you to track where the appointments are coming in from if you have multiple sort of ways to book these appointments. And it's just a little bit easier for you to track this correctly if they can just write where they book the appointment. And yeah, uh, if you're a beginner, I don't recommend to have much else because remember, the more questions you have, you are creating more friction for them to actually book the call but at least I think these questions are um, still good to have. But as you can see here, we have some more, but let's say this last one, this is basically what we have added because we are able to book a lot of appointments quite easily. And which means that we now want to focus more on actually qualified booked appointments. So this means that we'll just include a question to see if people are in able to invest in the growth of their business because we resonate that if let's say someone who aren't willing at all to invest, book a call, that means that someone else who might be will not be able to book for that spot because it's taken. So we were either just be able to see this if they, if they say not willing, we don't simply take the call because it makes no sense for us to take that. But if you're a beginner, you should take every single call that you can, at least you get some sales practice. Okay, that's that. Moving on to workflows. So workflows, I think here is when you actually need the paid version of the Calendly and yeah, I, I'm quite sure I'll, I have the just the simplest one for like 15 bucks, but I recommend that because you get are able to have these workflows, which is basically that you can sort of include uh, reminders and stuff because it's a little confusing here because there are workflows and there are notifications, but Workflows include some like notifications you can't do through the notifications. So yeah, I just remembered, um, recommend to use this. So if we just go in, because you, you can't actually edit the workflows here. If you just press here, you can. So what we have done is that, yeah, we have one that is text booking confirmation to host. I think this, you can find this as a template. And yeah, we have selected this to all our events. And when this happens, immediately when new event is booked. And uh, yeah, do this, send text to host. So let me just go in and edit. And then we can see the sort of message we have. It's very, very simple. We, uh, yeah, like I've written it here. You can find it down below. I think it's the basic one and that you use. So this is basically that um, I get a text when someone books an appointment with me. I just think that's great to know. I want to know that. The other one is very, very similar, but instead of getting a, uh, I getting a text, the, uh, the, the invite, the, the one who books the appointment actually gets a uh, reminder as well. So yeah, same thing immediately when the new event is booked. And if we go in here, it's... Let me just see. No, I went to the same one. All right, here we are. 
yeah, I also think this is the exact same basic one as the, the sort of, yeah, like in the template. So that's just what we're using. But again, feel free to do whatever you want with this. All right, going back, that is that for workflows, notifications and cancellation policy. So first one, we have calendar invitations on and default text. So if we press here, personalize, um, yeah, this is on and it's just basically the default text here again, which is um, here when you, uh, when you create this basically. Um, so yeah, email reminders, we have this on and default text here again. And what we have set this to is that we have one that is 24 hours before the meeting takes place, one and that is one hours before, and one that is 10 minutes before. And we've just set this, I, I recommend this setup because it's not too spammy and it's also make sure the prospect actually knows and gets reminded they actually had an appointment with you. Email follow-up, we just keep this off. Don't really make sense to have that on. Text reminders, we have this on and a default text. Exact same timing as for the emails, 24 hours, one hour and 10 minutes before. Okay. And yeah, if we just press here, show cancellation policy. And I recommend to keep this include cancel and reschedule links and notifications because you might think that if I don't include this, people won't be able to cancel. And that means I get a better show up rate, but that's not really the case because if someone wants to cancel and can't sh and show up to the meeting, if they aren't able to cancel that, they would they just won't care and just won't show up. So I I resonate that it's at least better that you of course know this beforehand, so you don't just sort of sit at that meeting and at least let them reschedule or even cancel their appointment. So I just rec uh, recommend having this checked. All right, then we're moving on to the confirmation page. And yeah, so. At the end of the event setting, you have the option to use your own thank you page, which we highly recommend you do. So, um, yeah, we use Go High Level for our website and also our thank you page. And you can probably create something similar on whatever platform you have your website on now. And yeah, you can find our thank you page here. I won't show you here. You can go to the resource to find that, make a model of that if you want. And yeah, if you go there, you can see it's not very advanced, basically just some text and a Loom video of me going through some good things to know before attending the call. As I said, feel free to model this um, and sort of template to your own thank you page. And here's just some tips for the thank you video because I recommend having some form of video so you can actually see you. And uh, we recommend just start the video off by congratulating them for booking a call. You want them to feel hyped and you should have really, really good energy. Like you, you should seem very, very excited to talk to them, which you should be. And also, um, what we recommend is that you establish some rules that you sort of want the prospect to follow when attending the call. And this sort of ties in to what we have uh, here in the description. So like, for example, we mentioned that we want um, all decision makers to attend the call. We remind them it's a Google Meet, so please be at your computer and in a quiet place, stuff like that. Um, okay. And yeah, that is basically it. Um, and if you are sort of using a an external site, you of course need to put the redirect URL here. And yeah, that's basically what you need to do. And collect payments, we don't have this on at all. Okay, that is basically that. Now it's time for the Google Calendar plus Google Meet integration. So how you do that is basically you go to account, you press settings, then you go to availability, connected calendars. And as you can see here, uh, I already have my calendar or two calendars connected, but yeah, you just basically press this button, add a calendar account. You need to log in with your Google account. And yeah, I just recommend this because then you can, if you use Google calendar, you can also add like other calendars. I just use Google calendar because I think it's the best one out there. And it's just integrated to your own calendar, so you can sort of block out the time you're not free and want, don't want to have sales calls, etc. Et so once you have, have done that, um, yeah, also check for conflicts, add this to your calendars. So check for conflicts means that what calendar 
will calendly check if it if you are available basically so just add the calendar you want here and also add the calendar so where the event should be added i it's recommend you just have the same um yeah there that's basically that google calendar setup so now when you've sort of connected your google calendar now also google meet will be automatically connected um but yeah you might not sort of have properly configured your google calendar yet so i'm gonna show you what i've done so you can sort of get some inspiration and this week looks a little uh, strange so let me just move on to next week so um it's important that you go to the google calendar that you connected to calendly schedule out all times you aren't available to take sales calls so yeah set events to recur daily or weekly so you don't have to do redo this every week so you can see here my calendar is filled out with a ton of stuff and first of all what i recommend and um, because of course when you're sleeping you don't want to take any sales calls so i'll just block that time out just create an event basically and if you want to sort of make this happen every single day and what you do is when you're creating the event you go to yeah you can have multiple options i'll set this to daily and you can have like weekly monthly and custom i'm gonna show you that later but yeah that's basically what i'll dump asleep just do that daily also i block out time sort of here i have my morning routine and i blocked out time where i have service delivery because again like and my calendar is now optimized because we have we are able to book uh, quite a lot of appointments so we are sort of we have the, now the privilege of sort of selecting when we want our appointments to be scheduled. But again, if you're a complete beginner, I really recommend that you want as many appointments as possible. And again, you want to create the least amount of friction for someone to book a call. And that's why I recommend that you just keep your calendar free for as many appointments as possible. And by the way, if you want to know how to actually, because as you can see here, I'll schedule out where I want sales calls. But if I just do this as a regular event, this will be blocked in the calendar, uh, calendar because it says I'm not free. So if you want to do this, you just, when you create the event, and um, yeah, you, you set it when you wanted to, so that it's weekly on weekdays. But here, when it's like you have this sort of bag or whatever that is, you change the, uh, uh, normally by default it's busy, but you change it to free. So this means that some people can actually book their appointments here. Okay. Um, and yeah, just I just recommend you go now and sort of change your calendar, structure it, have a really, really good structure so you sort of can follow that every single day. As you can see, I've scheduled out when I go to the gym, when I should do service delivery, evening routine, my weekends I've also scheduled out. And um, so yeah. And also very important, Remember to schedule out all times you aren't available that don't occur daily or weekly. So for an example, if you have a doctor appointment for an hour tomorrow, schedule that out as well. So when life happens, schedule out whatever happens in your life so that people can't book at those times. It's quite simple. Um, and yeah, also as I mentioned before, make sure to keep as many spots as possible uh, open for sales calls, eight plus per day preferably. So yeah th that's basically it and got nothing else quite a action-packed video um but yeah hopefully everything made sense and uh yeah that's basically it also just want to mention so i don't forget if you sort of are looking to get more appointments and need help there is a link the first one in the description won't say anything more than that have a really good day and make sure to stick around for next week's uh no not not next week but the next episode not showing that uh will be published, but soon.